it weird of me to say that I think I might want to get married twice? Like, the concept of being married to one person for the rest of my life, I love it. I love the idea. But realistically speaking, for me, just for me, is that what I really want? Like, what if I get married when I'm 30 and I live till I'm like 95? I've been with the same man for 60 years? I just don't know how feasible that is for me. I don't know how enjoyable that's going to be. But now, imagine I get married, I fall in love, we got our two kids, and then when we've been married for like 20 years, we're like, okay, we've grown in different directions, you know, I still love you, you still love me, but I think maybe we could be better apart, that type of thing. So we get a divorce, and we co-parent our kids, and I get to be free and single for a couple years and live my life and do what I do what I do. Then in comes the second love of my life at age like 60 at this point. And we've both been married before and we both have kids already. So now we can take all the knowledge from our first marriage and all the money that we have because we're like established in our careers and we get married again. Then I get to do things at my second wedding that I didn't even know I would want at my first wedding. And I don't have to have kids in this marriage. So it's just me and him. And again, we've got more money and more knowledge. I don't know, guys. It sounds really compelling to me. I'm not going to lie to you. I think I think that might be my thing. At this point, I don't have any sympathy for the men who end up with these women because they are showing themselves to you. Literally, they are showing themselves to you. And there'll still be simps out there pouring and begging for these women's time and attention. Three things I'm no longer doing now that I am in my 30s when it comes to dating. Number one, I will not be someone's girlfriend. You will not be my boyfriend. I will not play that game. We're dating, we're getting to know each other, and then it's straight marriage. Like, I'm not doing, I'm not being your girlfriend for three years. That's not, mm, I'm not doing it. That then brings me on to the second point, which is I will not be introducing the man that I'm dating to my parents unless it's to ask for my hand in marriage. Waste my time? Waste my parents' time? No. And if you come from an ethnic background, you know that meeting the parents is a serious thing. And I feel like I've introduced my parents to far too many of my boyfriends. I have been Delulu far too many times. I'm not playing that game. I just kiss my headphone. And thirdly, I am not spending over 20 pounds on somebody that I'm dating. I have learned in my reflection that I am very generous, especially when I am in love and I'm getting ooh, down. And if I think about how much money I've spent, that includes transportation across the globe, I'm not spending money. Like if you wanna see me, if you want my time, if you wanna hang out, if you wanna buy me gifts, sure. But I'm not doing that in return. Like my presence is enough and that's on period. It's funny to me because when women talk about why men date younger, they always bring up the negatives, right? Because they want to shame men, obviously. Talk about they want to manipulate them, you know, their frontal lobe isn't developed, whatever the case is, all this nonsense, right? But they never talk about trauma. And for me personally, if I was dating younger, it would be to avoid trauma because trauma makes women delusional. The idea that you're not going to become someone's girlfriend, do you want an arranged marriage? Arranged marriage, you speak to them for a couple of weeks and then you get married straight away. Is that what you want? If that's what you want, I respect it. Arranged marriage is actually quite successful. But in Western dating, you have to become someone's girlfriend before you become someone's wife. And then the idea that you're not going to spend any money on your partner in this day and age, you're not spending no money on someone that you're dating. But this is what happens when women have been used and abused mentally and physically. These are the results. There's one thing that my mom taught me not to be, is not to be a dumb bitch. So I'm going to share a piece of advice with you that she gave me that has been helping me dating in my 20s. I'm 22. I am eventually soon-ish looking to be in a long-term relationship where I could settle down. AKA marriage, family, all that good stuff. I feel like we see a hoe phase as something very bad, but it's actually really good. You want yourself and your partner to have explored other people, to have dated and have past relationships and just been in that whole phase for a reason. When you two come together, you want to be able to choose each other outside of that. You have gone out, you have explored, you've seen what's out there. Now you're choosing 
to let that go and be together. Especially in a man, I don't think you want to have a guy be your husband that hasn't experienced or gone through his whole phase because the possibility of cheating and with women too, but I feel like there's a higher possibility of cheating. This is going to help you and your partner know what you like, what you don't like, um, what qualities you want in the relationship, what qualities you don't like. Just you learn so much during these phases and they are honestly parts of your life that help you develop so much. So I don't think it's a bad thing at all that people go through whole phases. So yeah, that's what my mom told me and I think it's 10 out of 10 advice. She belongs to the streets. Isn't it interesting that women's natural feelings or their natural instincts or their inklings, whatever you want to call it, when it comes to dating, tend to be the complete opposite of reality. I feel like having a whole face is good because I feel like it will lead to less cheating in the marriage. But as we know, the people with the lowest divorce rate are virgins. It's the complete opposite of what you're saying. Now look, I'm not saying I'd want a virgin, but I'm not saying I want a hoe either. There's a balance. And that advice your mum gave you is going to set you up for failure. What advice did your dad give you? Serious. So I talked to my friend last night and I was asking her about this guy that she had told me that she had met on a dating app. That's where they're the most unserious. Asking her how it was going and the story goes like this. She met this guy on a dating app. They had talked on and off the app for about a week and a half, almost two weeks before he asked her on a date. Um, they were going to some restaurant. I don't remember the restaurant. And about an hour before they were supposed to meet at the restaurant, he texts her and tells her, make sure she gets snacks so she don't bring too much of her appetite because he didn't intend on buying both of them full meals. Now, I wouldn't have went on a date. That would have been it for me. You can go alone. But that's just me. She continues to talk to the guy even after the date. She said the conversation was okay, but she continues to talk to him. About two weeks go by and his birthday weekend is coming up. And so he had been subtly hinting that he wanted to spend some of his birthday with her. So she hesitantly, she said she really wasn't feeling doing nothing with him for his birthday because they haven't been talking that long. And, you know, the first date, which was very off-putting, but she tells him that um, she can meet him at Firebirds for Saturday lunch and they can celebrate his birthday then. He agrees. She gets to Firebirds on that Saturday and she's sitting at the bar waiting for him and he comes in and she said he seemed like he got like a little slight attitude. So as soon as he get there, you know, she's like energetic, like, oh, it's your birthday. Happy birthday. He gets, she gets him a birthday shot. And she said, you know, maybe like 15 minutes or so go by, like the birthday shot didn't kick in. He seemed like he's loosening up a little bit. So she asked him, like, you know, it's your birthday. Like, you don't really seem that excited. Like, you don't really seem like you're in a birthday mood. Like, are you good? And so he tells her that he didn't know if he really even wanted to come meet her because he doesn't understand why she didn't pick. Now, in this, where the, where the Firebirds restaurant is, it's at a mall. So it's a lot of restaurants around. He doesn't know why she didn't pick somewhere nicer, like P.F. Chang's or Capitol Grill is in that same plaza and down the street is Fleming's. And so he mentions like, you know, you went with your coworkers last week for one of their birthdays to Fleming's. I don't know why you wouldn't take me to Fleming's on my birthday instead of Firebirds. Come again? I forgot to mention that part of the reason that he knew that she had gone to Fleming's the week before for her co-worker's birthday is because she met him after that dinner at a bar. He invited her out for a drink. So she says she goes and meets him at the bar. They're sitting there having a drink. The bartender asks if she want another drink. And she says, yes. He turns to her and says, oh, well, I only invited you out for a drink. So if you get a second drink or anything after that, it's on you. Okay. Now, this is where I told her she messed up because after that, why would you be doing anything for this man for his birthday? Girl, I guess. He also says, and then you text me this morning to tell me happy birthday and I told you I was on my way to get my haircut and you didn't even offer to pay for my haircut for my birthday. Sis. And I'm talking to you, young man. Y'all, the sassy men apocalypse continues. This is why we feel no sympathy for women who get dogged out by Pookie and Ray Ray. We feel none. How many red flags 
did she have to avoid to get to the end? How many? The first date. Yo, make sure you eat something because I want you having a big appetite because I ain't about to spend money like that. On the first date, that was your sign to walk away, but you couldn't do it. There was something about him. The toxicity was just radiating off him. And that's what we say about Pookie, Ray Ray, Tyrone. These aren't good men gone bad. These women see the red flags in them off rip, but choose to ignore it for some ungodly, unknown reason. There is some patriarchy in it. There is some misogyny in it. There is a level of sit down, be quiet, do what you're told and just be pretty in it. There is a level of get up and cook for me in it. You gotta know this by now. Be careful about what you ask for because traditional men come with old school traditions. I just believe that men should pay all the bills. They should do all of the repair and maintenance on the house and the cars. Matter of fact, they should be the one providing the cars. He should make sure that I have all my needs and wants because that's what real men do. He should help me raise these kids. Yeah, I know they're not his, but he should help me raise those kids because if he's a real leader, that's what real men do. Yeah, he should make sure that I'm safe and protected. And if the air in my tire is low, he should stop what he's doing and come and put air in my tire because that's what real men do. Mm hmm Am I going to submit? No. Submit for what? I'm, I'm not his kid. Am I going to cook and clean? Why would I? I ain't no maid. Am I going to pray over him and speak life into him? Mm -mm. He better get his mama to do it. Would I look like a cheerleader? Am I going to make sure that the house is clean? Clean? And are we going to hire people for that? Am I going to have a baby for him? Have a baby for what? Uh, And ruin this body? Mm -mm. He already got kids. He need to take care of these kids. Y'all see how silly that sound? Y'all really believe that y'all are going to be able to get these traditional men with the traditional mindsets that come with the benefit, but y'all want to modernize them so he fits into your world. Y'all want the benefits of a traditional man without the requirements. And like my good friend Yaya just said, you have to understand it's going to come with some misogyny. It's going to come with a certain level of patriarchy. It, it's going to come with, hey, that's enough talking sit down you understand that right and while y'all are so quick to fight the fact that if you want the benefit of men who think that way you gotta also come with the responsibilities it's okay for you to submit to a man a good man that is taking care of you and meeting all your needs you understand it is okay for you to cook and clean for that man and take care of him i'm gonna go in the house right now and take care of mine before he go to work because it's a good man, Savannah. You cannot get one thing without the responsibility of that thing. In it, no situation. So I need y'all to either be okay with the requirements of a traditional man, or I need y'all to stop asking for something that y'all really not ready to handle. Okay, bye. Oh, man. So I've said this before, but there's a small contingency of women on TikTok who have essentially achieved a dream. They've achieved the simp of their dreams. This man is the provider, but he also cooks and cleans. He does everything. And these women do nothing. And their content is spreading and it's becoming bigger and bigger. Sprinkle Sprinkle is a prime example. If you listen to her, her husband does everything. She does nothing. She doesn't even cook for her husband. She does nothing. And these women are fixing their lifestyles and it's giving women a delusional idea or delusional false sense of reality that these men exist in drones. But this is where the idea that I'ma have a traditional man and offer nothing traditional in return is coming from. I'm telling you, it's coming from TikTok. Looking like a man 101. I love you, but I'm gonna cheat on you. But if you cheat on me, I can't take you back. If I cheat on you, you have to take me back. Because if you cheat, that means you've invested your feelings into that man. But if I cheat, it means nothing. Like literally, I just put my pee-pee inside of her. It means nothing. There's nothing attached. But you cheated with a man. That means you actually like him. So no, I can't take you back. You're actually a W-H-O-R-E in my eyes now. But when I cheat, you have to take me back because it doesn't mean anything. I don't feel like you have to do anything. I don't feel like anybody is like tying your hand saying that you have to take him back. I don't think that's how it works. Like literally, it means nothing. I don't want you in men's DMs. Like don't talk to no guy. Stop being so friendly. You're a friendly female. Stop acting like that. 
but when i swipe up on female stories that just means that like it doesn't mean anything actually like i'm literally just complimenting them i don't see the big problem when you swipe up on their stories that means that you actually like them for real but when i do it it's just a compliment where are you finding these guys uh -huh. i feel like most men understand that cheating in general is bad whether they do it or not they understand that cheating is bad relax stop commenting on other men's posts like that's it's really disrespectful and you look like a w-h-o-r-e but if you see me comment under a female's post so it doesn't mean anything. i don't know her i've never seen her before like literally i've only seen her on social media it doesn't matter i don't know man i just feel like you guys need to just pick better honestly strange thing being a woman in this society having recently rounded the bend of 40 because with every passing year i get funnier i get kinder i get wiser i get better at loving i become a better person um but every year society values me less and less and it's a strange kind of pain this i love it loving myself more every year and watching who i'm growing into while society goes through that process in reverse um so if you ask me would I go back to, you know, 25 or 30 for that additional societal capital, no. Uh, I enjoy this age more even with society's bullshit. But will I judge women who do whatever it takes to stave off the external effects of aging? No, because it's a weird thing to be getting better and better internally and to love yourself more and more internally um, and not have that process reflected externally. It will hit a wall. Look, by society, we know she's talking about men, right? But what a lot of these women don't understand, these women who have been single for a long time, single in their 30s, single in their 40s, what a lot of these women develop is trauma. And men don't like trauma. On top of that, men, most men, would prefer a woman who is younger than them. So what you will have is the men in your age group are looking for women who are also great women but who are just younger which is why we always say women should figure out this whole dating thing in their 20s so they don't have to experience these problems i first started therapy i was going once a week during the pandemic i was going through a breakup and then the, the race war was happening as the, those two things combined are the reason i put myself in therapy um after my fourth session so my fourth week uh my therapist you know, we had closing thoughts. It's just like, you know, Mecca, I've noticed something. You respect men as much as you have to, but you definitely believe that women are superior. And I said, yeah, that's a safe assertion. She was like, it's interesting how everything you've said that your mom does about your mom that gets on your nerves are also the thing, the very things that you respect about her are also the very characteristics that she's passed down to you that you take a lot of pride in characteristics that you see in other women and prove to you that women are superior to men. She really ate me up. <laughs> so the more I'm on TikTok, the more weird, like, the more I realize it's just a place for weird people, people with mental health issues, people with all kind of trauma to just come together because you see and hear some of the weirdest things that people just say normally. You know, imagine she's getting on TikTok and she's saying women are superior to men, like comfy. Imagine what she says when she's at home. And I don't know about you guys, but I've said this before. A woman's personality can change the way I even see her. And it's just hard for me. When she, the more she speaks, the harder she is to look at. I don't know what's, I don't know. Truth is, when you're dating a girl that's very, very independent, she's probably always going to say no anytime you ask her, does she need anything? And as toxic as you may think that is, we all have our baggage. And then when you are in a relationship, you work through that trauma with that person if that's the person that you decided to be with. So if you want to help her to stop being so prideful in that sense, and yes, she needs to be working on her trauma too if she is overly independent. I have to say things for clarity. But anyways, if you feel like you want to do something for her, just do it. Take that initiative because when she sees you taking that initiative, it'll make her more comfortable and more trusting and she'll feel like she can depend on you a little bit more. And just for clarity, independence is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. But too much of anything can become a bad thing. Oh, hear me out. This, this is even better. Guys, if she's independent, leave her in her independence. Don't date no independent queens. Why are we still dating these masculine women? Let them be. Let them work on themselves by themselves. There's no working on yourself while you're in a relationship. 
Go be alone. This liquor got me get my zone. Now I'm blowing up your phone. Blowing weed smoke in the ozone. I just can't let this go. This liquor got me in my zone. Now I'm blowing up your phone